This is the Arturia AudioFuse 16 rig audio interface. Not only is it a studio powerhouse, but it's different. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. I get to see a lot of audio interfaces on this channel and I have to say that within each class they can be very similar, but not this one. Usually when you buy an audio interface in this class, you're looking for those extra inputs so that you can record things like bands or drum kits, etc. And this is very useful if that's what you want it for. However, it's got some additional features that I don't often see, which make it particularly useful to a certain group of people. Now, if you've got a studio with lots of outboard gear, lots of effects processors, etc., then this could certainly be useful to you but it's very, very useful if you are a keyboard player. If you've got a collection of synthesizers, drum machines, that kind of thing, then this has got some features that you're absolutely going to love. Now, before we dive in, I have to say that this video is not sponsored by Arturia. They have no idea what I'm gonna say about this. They have no input uh, into the video. However, it is sponsored by DistroKid. If you follow the VIP discount link in the description down below, you'll get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music around the world. Now, let's dive into some basic specs. The AudioFuse 16 rig is a USB interface with 32 inputs and 26 outputs. Now we have to be a little bit careful when we're talking about these figures with audio interfaces because we usually include the digital inputs and outputs. This has 16 digital inputs and outputs via ADAT. So we're left with an impressive 16 analog inputs. That's twice what you normally see with an audio interface in this class, with very few exceptions. It also has 10 analog outputs, but these are no ordinary outputs. We'll talk about that later. Now it operates at 24 bit with sample rates up to 192 kilohertz. And as you can see, it can either be used as a desktop interface using the legs provided or you can rack mount it. And some of the features that you find on this audio interface really take into account the fact that you may be rack mounting it. As well as this, I should mention that not only can it be used as a regular audio interface hooked up to your computer, but it can also be used in standalone mode, meaning even if your computer is switched off, if you have something like a synthesizer, say, plugged into this and it's hooked up to your monitors or headphones, you will still be able to hear whatever is plugged into it. And you can get to the features included with this interface via the front panel. Talking about the front panel, let's go through that now. Right away on the left hand side, we see a point of difference with two quarter inch outputs. We don't often see outputs on the front of an audio interface, but this is especially useful if you want to do things like, you know, guitar reamping or something, or anytime you quickly want to connect something up via the outputs and you don't want to have to go around the back of the unit. Especially useful if this is rack mounted. Next to this, we see our input section with the standard two XLR combo inputs useful for microphones that use XLR, or you can alternatively plug in instruments via the quarter inch jack. But next to that, we see another two inputs labeled three and four. Now this is actually a three and a half millimeter input, really quite unusual. There are some synthesizers that use that kind of a connection and it could be useful if you quickly want to plug in say a phone or something along those lines. Now I should mention with all of these inputs that they're not the only inputs for one, two, three and four. They override the main inputs which are on the back. Okay. Next to this, we see our main control panel with a few buttons to the left, a color screen in the middle, and this kind of a jog wheel which you can use to navigate the current screen and you press it to make selections. Now, I didn't read the instructions on how to use this at all. I found it very, very intuitive and quite easy to change settings without having to resort to the manual. This is really useful when you're in standalone mode and of course you're not using a computer with it. So very useful indeed. Next to that we have the main output section with the volume control there. We also have a mute switch 
and below that you can see a switch with a kind of a speaker icon. This is a function button so it can be programmed from within the software and you can assign it to say switch to alternative speakers for example. Next to this we have the headphone section with a level control there and two outputs a quarter inch jack and a three and a half mil output. I should note here that these are not independent outputs. They both have the same mix going to them. Next to that, we have something quite unusual with USB ports on the front. Now, one of them is a hub so that when you have this connected to your computer, it acts like a regular hub. So if you wanna, you know, maybe you've got a hard disk with some sounds or samples on it, you wanna quickly plug it in, that would be accessible there. And the other one is labeled MIDI. Now this is useful if you've got say something like a controller keyboard that you might be using to control perhaps other synthesizers or something in your studio. And the reason it's useful is because this is still operational even when you're in standalone mode, when your computer is switched off. So lots of useful points there. Let's take a look at the back. On the right hand side, we have our 16 quarter inch analog inputs. Now these can be configured via the software to use a professional line level of plus four dBU or a consumer line level of minus 10 dBV. And as I mentioned earlier, with inputs one, two, three, and four, they will be overridden if you connect anything via the front panel, unless you specify otherwise from within the software. Next we have our eight quarter inch balanced outputs. Now I mentioned earlier that these are a little bit different and they are in that they are DC coupled, meaning that they can also be used to send control voltages to modular synthesizers, something I haven't personally seen before. Next to this we have our two quarter inch balanced outputs which would normally go to our studio monitors. Then we have our digital input output section with two ADAT ins and outs and also our word clock connections. I use word clock with all of my studio gear that can use it. It keeps everything perfectly in sync and really helps to reduce sort of artifacts um, with your digital signals. Next to this, we have our MIDI section with MIDI in, out, and through, and also a three and a half millimeter jack to, for MIDI sync with modular synthesizers. Next to this, we have our a hub, which is similar to the one on the front. You can use this to connect all kinds of things uh, via USB without having to go to your computer. We then have our connection, which, which goes to our computer. It's USB-C, and they give you two braided cables here, one that terminates to USB-C on the other end, and the other one that terminates to USB-A. Then we have our power connector, which I'm pleased to see is screwed in so it doesn't accidentally get pulled out and that goes to our power brick. Just a quick reminder that it's super easy to release your music via our sponsor DistroKid. You simply upload your sound file, some artwork, fill in a pretty simple form and DistroKid does the rest for you, getting it to places like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, etc. Just follow the VIP link in the description down below to get your discount now. Now something I'd recommend with this product is that you spend a little time to learn the software which comes with it to control it. It is a very sophisticated piece of hardware so there are lots of options in there. Now something that kind of caught me out initially was for example the mixer screen which was actually blank to begin with and I found I had to add the channels that I want to use as I wanted to use them. Now that actually makes a lot of sense because it means you're not overwhelmed with lots of things on the screen that you're not using, but it is a little unusual, so it's worth investing a little bit of time on that. There's also a matrix feature in there, which is very, very powerful, and enables you to send your signals from inputs and outputs to all kinds of different places. So uh, I find, found that was very useful. And once you've set it up for you know specific sections, then you can save it as a preset so you don't have to go through that with every single session. Now, as well as this controller software, there's also some bundled software with it as well. So as well as Analog Lab Intro, you also get a nice selection of Arturia effects plugins, including things like reverbs, delays, compressors, 
preamps, uh, things like choruses as well. I really actually love Arturia's effects plugins. I've talked about them on a couple of occasions. Here's a link to one of my videos right here. This is a very Arturia interface. They're known for their keyboards, their synthesizers, and um, this ties in very much with that. So it's, it's nice to see them kind of sticking to what they do best. But outside of that, it's just really well thought out. It's nice to see companies thinking like this. Things like, you know, some useful things on the front panel that sometimes get tucked away at the back and definitely obviously features which are tailored towards a specific target group. Now, if you normally will be recording using lots of microphones, obviously there's only the two XLR combos on the front there, but this would be useful if like me, you usually use mic preamps anyway. You can hook that up via ADAT to this and then all of those quarter inch connections on the back are really useful. Um, if you're not a synth player, for example, really useful for outboard gear, for uh, compressors, um, etc. So um, very useful in the studio in that way. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, as for the price, I'm not quite sure what the price will be at the moment, but if you follow the link for this product uh, down below, then you will be able to find out how much this costs in your region. Thank you so much uh, for watching today, and I'll see you in the next video.